uh, Wundt like really did a lot of like very experimental empirical work uh, already back then. And Helmholtz is uh, the idea that, uh, sorry, the idea, that, oh my God, the person that is often associated with the idea of active inference, like he studied perception. Okay. And um, well, he already g gave some basic ideas of this idea of how what we perceive is the, the difference between what we expect and the information that comes from the environment. And this was already said by Helmholtz uh, in the 19th century or no, probably then in the 20, beginning of the 20th century. Uh, yeah. Interesting. I, I didn't even know that active inference went that 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 way back into 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 history. I, I thought it was a very recent idea. That's so interesting. Yeah, no, exactly. No, I mean the idea like how it is now established is a recent one, or like understanding how important this idea is is a recent one because we had a long like we had a long period where people did understand perception as this way more passive uptake of information and not as this active inference. So the new relevance of this idea is recent, but it has been said way back historically, for example, by uh, by uh, Hermann Helmholtz. Uh, and it, it, what's even more interesting is, of course, if you go further back in time, there have been many other people who've, who've also already said that or similar ideas. So, for example, I have a book here about uh, the theories of vision, um, where you can, I mean, you can go back to like old polymath in, in different centuries, and they already had many ideas of like how the mind works and how, for example, perception works. And of course, many of those ideas in retrospect feel very esoteric, but often they're very, very like well put analyses already in there that we would now come back to and, and still agree with. Um, so I think that's also one of my main learnings in doing this map. Um, but when I started out, I felt like, right, like, oh, well, well, there are those people way back that were super naive, but now we're doing proper science, right? So this very naive notion that, oh my God, you can dismiss everything from the past and people basically were idiots that were, were like very, very primitive. Uh, and, and I think the more you read history, uh, like historical ideas, the more you understand, no, no, people were already basically like we are today, uh, of course, we have more technological progress and definitely a pro pro a progress regarding how much information there is that we can access and then interact with. But the people had many of those insights, not just in the 19th century, but also already in the in the fifth century. Right. Like, it's very like it, it, the more, you know, uh, the less uh, optimistic you are about just, like how much progress we've really made. We've just often just understood better how right people were already long, long times ago. Yeah, yeah. No, beautifully put. I mean, a very, very perspicacious point because I, I couldn't agree more, uh, especially this, this, which is why I and I'm sorry if I'm repeating this point almost ad nauseum, um, that like, I wanted to articulate when, before we started that this is not teleological, because we're doing so yeah. much of retroactivity, and we're referring back and bringing back ideas. And for instance, you know, case in point, active inference, or the even the the, the the concept of active inference that it was already there in the you know uh, uh late 19th century that's quite mind-blowing given you know active inference really only came into the more of the public dialogue let's say after Carl Friston and 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 would you say you know the 2000s or I don't know early 2000s or regardless oh. yeah 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 yeah, uh, that's a really important point, I, and which is why I think uh, something like this, something like this kind of map and understanding the history of a certain field can, it's it's not just some kind of historical analysis, but it can even enrich the work we're doing right now in the moment to to refer back to uh, these thinkers and these schools of thought. Yeah. Let's say. Maybe one day I will uh, do also a map of the uh, eight. Like this is the. 20th century of the um, of the 19th century because that's of course where many of those ideas actually uh, were like occurred and a lot of the foundational work was already done um, right like that that we still do often also refer to implicitly um, so that will also still be very very interesting to actually do that would be a huge project though I mean especially the, <laughs> the more you go back the more texts you have to read and then <laughs> before you know it you at Plato. <laughs> So. I, I, disagree, I disagree that I think it would be less work because I think a there were just like less people in science like the centuries before and because we have more historical context we have a better understanding who in retrospect were, were like the most important people oh, okay. um, so I think it actually becomes easier and I feel like for example 
doing work on the history of ideas of the last 20 years is way harder because there it's very hard to say what were the most important. I mean, for some, it's quite clear, um, right? Like ImageNet was very, very important. Uh, but uh, but also um, but, but but a lot of the selection will still have to occur, and now deciding who was important and who wasn't is way harder. I think the further we go back, um, it, it actually gets easier. Yeah, you're probably right there. Maybe, maybe my thinking was a bit was a bit flawed because, like uh, in um, I recall in Gödel uh, Sherbach uh, Hofstadter, uh, he makes the point. He has this particle called chunking, and he says chunking is something where we do where we take a whole lot of information. And then we chunk it and then we abstract it out to a concept. And yes. it's much easier to chunk, let's say, 100 years of, of information or like intellectual work than the past 20 years. Because in the 100 years, you with, with time, the most important ideas, they just almost, they purely contingently, they emerge that as these being the most important ideas. So then it's easier for us to understand them through like an abstraction. Whereas in the past 20 years, it's a lot harder because there are all these papers being published. There are all these all of this work being done. And even we aren't sure at the moment which ones are going to be the, the the groundbreaking ideas or the the one ones that need to be given more salience over the others. So I, I, I can see what you what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah.